Tatum goes in a corner, won't go, the tip misses. The Miami Heat take a 2-0 lead here in this best of seven conference final. Well, things definitely got heated last night. Miami going up 2-0 over the Celtics, 106-101 after Boston blew a second straight second half lead, getting outscored by 20 in the third. And then there was after the game. Tensions really spilled over. ESPN's Malika Andrews reported that Marcus Smart was yelling at his teammates in the locker room before storming out, swearing, and then she heard sounds of things being thrown around and other players shouting as well. So things really seem to be uh, reaching a new level of tense within the Celtics organization. Kendrick Perkins here with us now, former Celtic champion. Guys, look, there's a lot going on here. Other members of the team, they did downplay what happened in the locker room after the game, but Celtics, they're now down 0-2. I think the series is over at this point. I do believe it's over because I picked the Miami Heat to win in seven, and I don't see Boston winning for the next five games. I just don't view it that way. So as a result, I do believe this series is over. Um, I don't know how many games it'll end in. Maybe it'll end in six. Maybe it'll end in five for all we know, or go seven. But I don't see uh, my, the Miami Heat losing, you know, for the next five games. I just don't see that. That's number one. Number two, to put on my report and hat, let me just tell y'all what I heard um, in the aftermath of the game. Uh, Marcus Smart got into it. He was going off on a team, and Jalen Brown stepped up and told him to calm down. We all a team. Let's come together, et cetera, et cetera. And they ultimately got into it. It was really about Marcus Smart and Jalen Brown to some degree uh, getting into a heated discussion. Jalen Brown more so trying to calm him down and Marcus Smart going the hell off. Uh, he didn't like the fact that he was called out for taking an ill-advised three uh, when Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown were both shooting field, or in J Jason Tatum's case, shooting 50% from the field. Uh, uh, Jalen Brown shooting 57% from the field from three-point range, yet this uh, Marcus Smart, who has been making threes, uh, who made a couple last night, uh, took an ill-advised three, and some folks had to talk to him about that. He didn't appreciate that as well from what I heard, but in the end, it's something that ultimately will blow over. That kind of stuff happens. Marcus Smart is highly competitive. He's a rough rider. I think he's been playing exceptionally well, and as far as I'm concerned, before last night was the MVP of the Boston Celtics in these playoffs, considering the level of consistency, the way he plays defense, and more importantly, him hitting three-point shots to, with regularity uh, in a way that he never has throughout his career. So I give him a lot of credit, and I think that, you know, obviously they'll come together because they got a lot of respect and love for one another. But that's what happened last night. In the end, the Heat, they've got their own Rough Riders. And somebody, I mean, we keep talking about Jimmy Butler, which we should. We keep talking about Am Am Bam Adebayo, who had 21 and 10 last night, who, which, which we should. Duncan Robinson is just a, in terms of his shooting ability. This brother pulls up from the parking lot. He had six threes last night. All 18 of his points came on three-pointers. That's what he's there for. He pulls up, and this brother can just... He's a marksman, okay? And last but not least, is somebody going to mention Goran Dragic? He had 29 in game one. He had 25 last night. This guy that's one of the older dudes on the Miami Heat squad is giving it to the Boston Celtics in these first two games. We saw Kemba Walker raise up and do a little something more offensively compared to what he had been doing over the previous five games in postseason competition. But Goran Dragic has been balling. He has been giving it to them. And unless somebody figures out a way to stop him, Miami, who overcame a 14-point deficit to win game one, a 17-point deficit to win game two, listen, I don't know how you're going to beat them if, he, if this dude keeps giving it to them the way he's been giving it to them. That's why I think this series is over. Uh, I, I, I agree with what you pointed out about the Heat. Duncan Robinson, not all three-point shooters are created equal. This dude is not just a three-point specialist. He's a next-level three-point a big thing for the Heat team to have. I want to address, I don't think the series is over. At this point, I'm taking the Heat because I started out thinking Boston would win. Like, this is a toss-up series. Boston will win it in seven because of the shooting and the defense. Not that Miami can't shoot or play defense. But I like Boston in seven. I thought Gordon Hayward would be available. And, and given how their talent is distributed at the top of that team, they have four real big guns and then Marcus Smart also when it matters. You take one of those pieces off, since none of the others are exactly MVP caliber, unless Tatum continues to develop into that throughout this, these playoffs, which is possible. But none of the other guys are, are someone you look at and say, that's an MVP, including Kemba Walker or Jalen Brown, who are really good. You need to be at full strength. They, they weren't with Gordon Hayward for games one or two. That said, they lost those two games. And they could maybe stolen either one of those games, right? At least made it 1-1. Down 0-2 now, I like Miami. But that's not the same thing as saying the series is over. We just saw in these playoffs... Boston jump out to a commanding lead against the Raptors. The Raptors tie it up. Boston go up against.
They had to go to a game seven. We saw that the Nuggets, that it's the bubble, man. Like, you know, weird things are happening. Go down 3-1 to Utah. That series is over. Come all the way back on Utah. And then what they just did to the Clippers, right? So I can't say it's unlikely that the Celtics come back from this, but they are getting Hayward back. At some point, they should. And, and, and so I can't say it's over, but I want to address Marcus Smart real quick. I cut guys like Marcus Smart a lot of slack when they get upset, even when sometimes they're not totally in the right. Because Marcus Smart is talented, but there are more talented guys than him. But his level of competitiveness, when it really matters, makes him exactly the guy you want on your team. Much like Jimmy Butler. Jimmy Butler's a talented player, but there are dudes more talented than Jimmy Butler. But his level of competitiveness, like a lot of players think they want it, then you know it's a little different. Marcus Smart is like that, so I don't see him blowing up, even going at it with Jalen Brown. I think like, oh, the team's imploding. It may just make them better. Well, I, I don't. I see this series being over. I, I don't see it going past six. Now, to Marcus Smart, uh, to Stephen A., to your point about him getting into it in the locker room and him blowing up and, you know, guys talking about him taking the ill-advised three uh, in the fourth quarter, well, they weren't about the wrong things. The Celtics should be worrying about how they losing their identity on the defensive end because the Miami Heat is having it their way in the paint from the three, from the mid-range. They're getting whatever they want. I started to change Bam name to Bam O'Neal because he was just dunking everything in the paint. These are the playoffs. He was hanging and swinging from the rim, snatching the screws out of it. Where's the interior defense? Marcus Smart had the right to go off because Marcus Smart, the whole game, he's going Jimmy Butler. Jimmy Butler is quiet. He switched on to going Dragic. All of a sudden, Jimmy Butler started going off. Jalen Brown, Jason Tatum, where are you guys at right now on the defense? Walker, where are you at? They are, they're, the Miami Heat are picking on you right now. They are picking on you. They're running you up and picking rows and trying to get you to switch out so they can create a mismatch. And by the way, people keep saying that Boston has the better team. And I don't believe that. I strongly believe that the Miami Heat have the better team, along with the better coach. Eric Spoelstra is the best coach in the bubble right now. The things that he is throwing out there, mixing it up, throwing out zones and, and, and putting the bigs in the front of the zones and the, the guards in the wings at the back of the zone and, and mixing it up, going man to man to boxing ones and, and, and his play calling. He is out coaching Brad Stevens right now in this series. And then you go down the line, like you said, Stephen A., going Dragic. Not only has he been playing well in his in this series, he's been playing well the entire playoffs. The guy's averaging 21 points a game, shooting 50% from the field, 40 from the three. You're talking about the best big in the Eastern Conference. I think he's number three behind mm -hmm. AD and Big Jokic right now. He's so versatile. He can switch wow. one through five on the defensive end. The only, the only one that could do that. And let's talk about these two unsung heroes. The unsung heroes, Tyler Hero and Jay Crowder. Wow, what's the minutes they've been providing, the production. I thought Tyler Hero was just a scorer, but he does everything. He takes pride on the defensive end. He's able to make plays on the offensive